Hello there and welcome to the Upload VR Gamescast. I am one of your hosts for this week, Jamie Feltham, and sitting next to me is not Harry Baker, but the one, the only, <laughs> Ian Hello. Hamilton. Hello, thank you for having me this week. Yeah, I'm in the United States. I noticed I noticed Harry wrote that it is winter update on one of his updates, and I, oh. I had to point out it is not winter right now. For It's just reverse, reverse for him. Although <laughs> he's in Australia, so winter for him, I'm sure, is still ridiculously hot, hotter than anything <laughs> I've ever experienced. So he should really just keep to the, uh, to the normal things. Uh, we are, of course... Here today to bring you the latest VR gaming headlines, impressions, in-depth discussions you won't find uh, anywhere else. And we could only be doing that uh, with the support of our members who are Lucas Longacre, Anthony Mann Rexford, Robert Canones Times 2, Handy Panama, Daniel Barwin, Jerome Houston, Andrew King, Skiva 007, Sexy, Sexy Bicycle, Matthew May, Rick Tet, 360 Pickable, Smash Reality, Adam Hartzell, and John Westra. Thank you so much for your continued support. Week in, week out, it means the world to us. What, what kind of week are you having, Ian? You having a good one? I, I am, yeah. I just uh, came from a, a mind-bending interview trying to understand asynchronous reality. So look for that on the channel at some point as I dive into exactly how asynchronous reality works. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a rabbit hole that I look <laughs> forward to, uh, to going down at some point. I won't understand a word of that conversation, but I look forward to seeing it. Um, let's kick off uh, with some headlines from the week. Now, uh, we've got three release dates to share with you uh, this week, uh, including some new game announcements thrown in there. Uh, the first being Ping Pong Pro is actually an old game that is coming to Quest 2 on May 26th. Now, I've said the name Ping Pong Pro, which is really hard to say without messing up. I've, I mean, you know what this is. It's a new ping pong game for Quest. Ian, do we do we need a new ping pong game for Quest? Oh. Because that territory's kind of already occupied, right? I, well, there's, there's variations on it, right? They can do, they can do other things. Eleven VR is very simulation focused and competitive yep. focused. You know, they they've spent a lot of time working on the physics in there to make it feel, uh, you know, for people that love to actually go to a table tennis club you know, and play it that regularly, but maybe don't have time for a home table, you know, give a couple extra hours of playtime per week with people who are mm -hmm. across the world. You could definitely do that with 11 table tennis. And I know that there's people out there that use that game for that purpose. But if you had a different take on it and you had some interesting mini games that, 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 that there's potential for that. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm kind of got, kind of got that vibe from this title. Yeah, I think that's a good way of looking at it. Um, the mini games are the big differentiator here. You do get, uh, you know, a tournament mode, uh, five different difficulties for AI when you're playing in that tournament mode in single player, and then also uh, multiplayer options as well. But yeah, then there's kind of some of the crazier uh, multiplayer options as well. I, I know what you mean. I just think this is kind of one of those things that I always thought about long before VR actually came into existence of... When you find something that actually almost basically perfects uh, the, the thing it's trying to replicate from real life into VR, don't you only ever need one of those things? Like mm -hmm. I always thought to myself, once, once someone's really got the shooter down in VR, you don't end up releasing a Call of Duty game every year, do you? Because you've already got the perfect shooter. You really can't iterate and change on it that much. And I think... That's kind of the interesting thing we're at with table tennis because it's like one of the only two or three things you can actually replicate pretty perfectly so far, I think. It's an interesting way of thinking about it. I'm thinking back of the early days of iPhone mobile apps with air hockey games, and I was always looking for the best phone-based air hockey game, and then they had the iPads come out, and you could reasonably have two people have their fingers on either side of a tablet and have a pretty good you know, finger-based air hockey game and you know those games went through this whole evolution of being like uh just trying to get the physics right the bouncing right get all the themes you know so you can have like an actual pretty experience on the board uh get great sound in there and then mm. uh you know the the market dropped out then you're you, you create this great game and then you stick an ad across the bottom two inches of the screen 
every two minutes or you have a mm. pop-up come over in between each game then that ruins the whole experience and you go back to the score looking for like one that doesn't have ads and that ends up becoming like the, the path ahead for table tennis games right like how do they keep new people coming back year after year after year and to your point like 11 table tennis if they remain kind of like the leader is there a lot of room for other games in that same genre well i don't know it's going to be up to like meta and the other you know steam to make sure that bottom doesn't kind of drop out of that market and they're all forced to go to like advertising or free to play models uh instead of that that big upfront yeah. purchase price cuz that's that's the only alternative i can think of is a table tennis table in my horizon home right in my yeah. home space well that again that's like the perfect example of this isn't it like if if meta chooses to like basically just lift this and put it in that persistent online area so you're no longer just choosing this as an app it's a it's a room you walk into or whatever again like then are you going to have a choice do you want to buy the do you want to i don't know insert the vr ping pong pro room into your horizon space or do you want to insert the 11 room into your space and will there be you know that room for that competition in that persistent online world especially seeing as one of them already does it so well i mean that's that is a question jamie like like if if theoretically meta released a table tennis table that you could have in your home and you could play a game that felt pretty close to 11 table tennis but it was with anyone who comes to your virtual house you know, would that eat away all the sales of 11 VR? Would that like just take that, uh, you know, really destroy that game's appeal? Uh, I, I, th I think it. There's a strong chance it could, and so I think you know, Meta has to be very careful with how it proceeds, because from the one angle, there's going to be the idea that you could make this in in the community and in horizon worlds, right? Like you could, I'm sure people already have made pretty good approximations of table tennis in there, but you are going to have this existing base of developers that you aren't going to want to alienate as you move closer, well, further away from an app store and closer towards, you know, the horizon future they envision. So I, I would like to see them offering that kind of stuff almost as like this kind of premium, uh, premium option. You remember when, um, Steam early on with Steam VR Home took like recognized the best VR games on Steam and then you could earn like little collectibles to put in your virtual house. That's kind mm. of what I would like them to, uh, to see them do on a on a bigger scale and say okay, well these guys actually really did nail the uh table tennis experience. So let's think of a way to actually bring that in here in a premium professional kind of package rather than it just being everyone makes their own table tennis thing as well you know like a like kind of like the asset library thing they added last week right like it's, it's 11 table tennis an asset you pick from a menu and then put it in a space somewhere yeah that's what i was kind of joking about with heaney as we were discussing that was is that an entirely different store front uh you know mm -hmm. that asset library eventually will probably have paid things you could get from it but that's like a you know a, a meta marketplace or something. Meta Mart is what one of our commenters joked uh, mm. that it would be a Meta Mart. Uh, but like I said, it's completely separate from the full game packages you go and buy from the Quest Store. Mm. Or is that a single marketplace where people buy everything in between from? Because yeah, like the air hockey example, right? I've taught, brought it up a couple times. Questies had an air hockey table that uh, venue that they built to promote in the Super Bowl. And it was an absolutely terrible experience, but the <laughs> argument can obviously made that they'll they'll eventually figure out how to do those quick person to person physics interactions, and then that could open up a whole range of those games. But until that happens, you've kind of got to have this separate networking layer and specialized stuff mm. just built for that specific interaction. And Horizon Worlds doesn't seem up to the task quite yet. Yep, I agree. So that yeah, that's going to be an interesting thing to uh, to see evolve, especially around those kind of sports games, because those will be the first to make that transition. Um, moving on to our next release date on June second, uh, we are going to get the release of the Last Clockwinder. Now, this is a really interesting little 
a puzzle game that plays with the kind of recursive uh, elements we've seen in other puzzle games recently. So essentially, uh, you are an automated robot that makes your own uh, construction line, if, if you will, um, working in a factory. So you record your first action where you pick up a fruit. And let's say we're seeing here in the trailer that you throw that fruit into a machine. Well, then there's no one there to actually operate the machine. So what you do is you teleport over to it and start operating it. But you've actually recorded your last action. So the fruit is still being thrown in a kind of loop where, and then you've actually set up the next part of the loop and then you'll go on through to the next part as well. So it's kind of like a single player co-op kind of thing, similar to like Transpose, if you've played that before or other upcoming games like We Are One. Um, I feel like this is looking like a really polished exploration of that idea and I love the art style. Um, I feel like this is a game that probably speaks to you quite a lot, Ian. With, with yeah, it does. Fun. You know the game, I keep thinking about this one game that has not made the transition from PC VR to Quest. Uh, mm. And I always think of Fantastic Contraption. Oh, this yeah. game that kind of sits in a lot of early library memories, but mm. it just uh, never, never made that jump. And yeah, that is such a fun interaction to kind of hand off to your future self and think through step by step exactly how you solve this. Uh, you know, you becoming part of the Rube Goldberg machine, uh, essentially. And I don't know, it, this this looks so delightful uh, as for, from, from a gameplay art perspective. And it, it is an idea that's a lot of devs are playing with. But yeah, look at how intense this can get uh, over yeah. time. It's going to be it's going to be wild. That running on Quest will be something really interesting to see. And also uh, published by um, Cy Ventures. So kind of got a little bit of mist to it as well, which is cool to see. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. I think I'm not a big puzzle guy myself, but I can appreciate like kind of the uniqueness of that and why it works so well in VR, for sure. Um, something that does speak, I think, a bit more to me is going to be the uh, June 9th release of Eolia, which is the follow-up game in the Rhythm of the Universe series. Um, this was announced uh, just after GDC a few months back and yeah, already coming to Quest 2 on uh, June 9th, as I said. This is really interesting to me because this is a full single player narrative adventure that is being designed with hand tracking first and foremost, uh, even to the point where it has hand tracking locomotion. You, you pinch and then you can use it as kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a joystick, uh, which is a really interesting idea so for me that is really fueling the interest in this title is are they going to be able to pull off basically the first full locomotion story driven single player campaign that really tells you that hand tracking is capable of doing that kind of thing which i, I think is going to be a real test right yeah that is going to be a, a really really interesting test to see and I'll probably have more thoughts when we get into the, some of the discussion at the end of this uh, mm. show. But like, it, it seems Waltz of the Wizard almost got there where they had, they introduced hand tracking sure. to a large portion of the experience. Of course, Vacation Simulator, we can't forget that, that that's got uh, somebody, you know, it doesn't have any storytelling right there yeah. at all, right? It's It's just the barest of bones of storytelling to kind of get you from one land to another in that game. So you're you're absolutely right that this is going to be a really really interesting marker, but I I do look at this and think like uh, I, I wonder if this period is kind of a beta test for other hardware. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good way of putting it. Of course, we have the you know recent hand tracking update that has improved things significantly, um, but I think a beta test is probably even now still a good way to phrase it. Yeah. Well, but as you said, we'll, we'll talk more on that a little later in the show. Uh, moving on, those are the release dates for you this week. Uh, we're going to talk about another favorite game of mine and Ian's, Demio. Um, the new campaign for Demio has been revealed. It is coming June 16th, uh, and it's another free update for the game, as all the previous campaigns have been. And then also there's going to be updates to the Heroes Hangout kind of multiplayer social hub. Um, including a really, I love this so much, a really, really cool extra feature 
where you're going to be able to paint figurines with your friends and kind of collect them. Um, I think that's such a cool evolution of like, it's, it's just something you wouldn't see in any other kind of social experience on a flat screen and something really, really uh, that has a lot of potential, right? Oh yeah. I, I'm really curious. I, I can't imagine developers would ever reveal whether they would be working on like a tilt five version of Demio before they actually are ready for mm. it. But they've done so much incredible work over there to make this a cross platform experience, right? Getting this mm. onto flat screens, being able to have that uh, start and stop feature where we don't have to finish the whole campaign uh, all in one sitting, right? They've, mm. they, they're clearly, and, and adding on all these campaigns, they are so uh, invested in this I th game, I think, as a long lasting, very, very big, deep title. And I, I can't wait to see how much they add on going after this. But it's, uh, it's hard, it's still hard right now to get people together to play this game, Jamie. How many of the campaigns have you played through at this point? um i've given a good go at the first three which is is what we're on isn't it yeah yeah um but it's not it's never been like i've only ever done the first one and i have yeah i haven't seen through the second or or third all the way through yet for sure yeah it's it is, brutal you're... it's such a tough it's, it's unforgiving uh in some respects right yeah, well, one one thing that's going to happen um, with this update in particular is they are going to make the wizard class better, um, mm. which I think is very very essential because I I think he was he was great at long range but then didn't have quite the impact he needed to be super useful in the especially with his area attacks they only like chipped off a bit of health so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes as well. Um, yeah, I I it's really. Oh, I'm struggling to find the word, but I'll just say it really backs up our choice to give this game of the year last year um, to just see how far it's come, even in the space of this year with Heroes Hangout watching you know, a couple of months ago, the flat screen version following on after that, and now another campaign and more significant updates to the Heroes Hangout. It's just, yeah, it's just absolutely what you said like they have total faith in this going forward just as resolution does with blast on as well and hopefully as they will do with um ultimax in the future as well i i i just want to see this growing and growing and growing and guessing yep. you know more campaigns every couple of weeks i was gonna check i was i wanted to see how the reviews were doing on steam for the um for the flat the screen flat version. screen version i yeah. they started off pretty positive from what i i can remember um which is great to see. And I think that's a very important thing. I do think it's a the kind of title where if you play it in flat screen, I, I can see so many people thinking, oh, this would be so much cooler in VR. Um, and bringing a lot yeah, it's of doing mostly positive. In. The flat screen PC oh, nice. edition is doing mostly positive over on Steam. So both versions of the game are resonating with the audience. And so I think they, you know, yeah, I think we're, I think they're on that path they want to be on. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then hopefully, you know, like a strong strong potential candidate for a PSVR 2 launch title or something next year to bring another uh, audience to it, which I think is is really, really great. So, yeah, so that's in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, more free updates for Demio, which I'm just super happy to see. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing more from it. Uh, final piece of news for this week. It's been a pretty, quite, pretty quick week. Uh, Pavlov, it's finally entering QA for the Quest Store. Uh, Pavlov Shack, this is, this is the kind of trimmed down a bit, standalone version of the PC VR shooter for Quest, um, which is kind of like Counter-Strike if you play Counter-Strike. Uh, the interesting bit of news here is that they are dropping Quest 1 support. So we've seen a lot of games this year come out only on Quest 2, but this is maybe the first time we've seen a pre-existing game say, okay, we can no longer support this piece of hardware, apart from, you know, some of Meta's own uh, own efforts on the Horizon side and everything. This is the first time that another developer has said, actually, this version of the game isn't going to cut it anymore. And when we get out onto the uh, official Quest store, because it's been on App Lab for so long, uh, you're only going to be able to get it on Quest 2. What do you make of that? Is that fair? Is it the right call? Do you, like... Well, from a developer's it... perspective, it's completely fair and the right call. Uh, the question mm. is... 
always on those quest one owners and whether they were trying to sort of treated fairly in the way that their accounts were handled and uh obviously the end of life of those devices and how they're actually sent off into the wilderness like how how operational are the original quest devices going to be a, a decade from now i think is a an open question at this point but yeah it's obviously the right call at this point in time every every one we talk to now indicating the quest one is you know such a small percentage now of the overall quest audience that there was a period there where it really made sense to target both but i think we're past that period yeah if, if i were going to throw a prediction out there and this is entirely speculation but i'll, I'll do it i think vertigo games will probably end up calling it quits on the quest one version of after the fall later this year as well right i don't I don't see why you'd pursue that anymore with so many games coming out as Quest 2 exclusives and, and that margin getting smaller by the day, right? Did they, did they launched it saying that it was going to be delayed, right? Delayed launch on Quest 1? Yeah, they said, yeah, all, all platforms apart from Quest 1 end of 2021, which they did. Um, and then they said at some point in the year, uh, a Quest 1 launch in 2022. I joked with you whether we should have a bingo card of VR games that will never happen. <laughs> and I think it's fair to put after the fall quest one edition on that yeah. bingo card. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, a, it's a shame because the, there's this, there's the mobile phone mentality and then there's the console mentality. And we've all, all always agreed that the VR console life cycle or headset life cycle will be somewhere in between those two right like it won't probably won't end up being like every year we're getting new headsets but uh, or significant new headsets but at the same time it's not going to be the five or seven years that a console goes on for and i think quest two uh, quest one was like an unfortunate uh early adopters product at the end of the day wasn't it in in that sense uh it was just such a success that, that meta decided to get the next one out there and make it an even bigger success as, as soon as possible. And it was, yeah, yeah. I, I still laugh that uh, those controllers uh, on the first uh, th 10 thousands of devices have hidden messages inside the controllers <laughs> that from, you know, some Oculus employee and yeah, those were quickly like put out to pasture, right? Those are collector's mm. items now that uh, if you've got those first sets, they've got hidden messages from Facebook mm. uh, inside of them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it really is kind of, I think was, I think for the rest of this year and probably into 2023, we'll still see indie projects releasing on the first quest. I think we'll still see a lot of support for the first quest on side quest and app lab and everything like that. I wonder but how it, many developers, yeah. Like how many developers have those original quests that devices for their, you know, they just didn't have the money to go and get the quest two yet. They bought in at quest one and tried you know, developing on that and they have mm. something on App Lab or, you know, they're something they're working on in Unity and, uh, you know, they're trying to bootstrap themselves and really get them going. Like how many people still have Quest 1s in that scenario? I don't know. Like you've you've got the all the meta programs for helping developers who are in that situation and they'll give you the latest hardware, I think, if you enter those programs. Mm. So I don't know. It, it just seems like something, it probably seems like something to move along. I doubt, I doubt there's many developers affected by it out there. Yeah. It's it's time for a eulogy or an obituary. We should do that at some point. Um, but uh, that, yeah, well, that's we for the future. Yeah, remember Quest One is yeah. Well, is that the breakthrough device or was it Go? Which which gets more credit in the history books? Uh, definitely Quest One. Not 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 even a competition, right? Yeah, I don't think. Like I don't. Yeah, I don't think Go really moved the needle um, so much as opposed yeah. to Quest. Okay. Speaking of. Well, past and future generations of uh, Quest devices and, and Meta devices, I should say. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get into our discussion for the week, which is uh, all about Project Cambria. Now, last week, I think it was, uh, we got some small updates on this headset, and it was Mark Zuckerberg giving us kind of a video preview that we've got up here on the TV of him <laughs> wearing a blurred out uh, uh, Cambria and doing some pass-through color mixed reality experiences. Um, the interesting thing I wanted to take from this was we've heard so much in the marketing about how Cambria is not like their next gaming headset, but it is still, it's kind of still a, 
a consumer headset, they've envisioned it as like replacing a laptop or a Chromebook uh, at some point in the future. So we also know that it's compatible with Quest and presuming that's, you know, accessing that library and everything like that. The question is, seeing as it's not aimed at gamers, but it's also not strictly in that kind of B2B enterprise space that like HTC operates in with their high level headsets. Um, will Cambria still be a big deal for gamers and VR people that are mainly interested in VR gaming? Or do you think most people will end up skipping on it uh, and waiting on qu for Quest for free? Yeah, really great question there. Heaney and I talked about this a little bit on our VR download. Uh, so I definitely go watch that one, our most recent episode where we dived into this. And the discussion that one of our commenters brought up was like, this, th we're getting a vibe of dev kit from this this next headset. Like this is mm. this is them building for a next gen dev kit. And so, from a games perspective, if you are a games designer, uh, you are probably gonna want to check out what Cambria brings to the table for you. Uh, it, the pro the question is whether it's going to compete for those dollars with whatever Apple does or what whatever you know, with, with PSVR too, mm. uh, but more so Apple, I think is the compete, the competition. If a dev has two grand to spend on developer hardware, who, who gets to, you know, who gets, which headset goes on their head to become their first XR development platform. Mm. Um, but there is an entirely different class of game that this is going to unlock for developers to, to build. And, it's I, I think of the example uh do, do you guys does the easter bunny come on easter uh over there in england <laughs> yes he does and hide eggs around the house yeah that well that's that's the idea i've, yeah, I've so, since learned that's not true by the way which is shocking to me but <laughs> i was i was i worded that very carefully uh in case there's <laughs> uh yeah people in our audience who uh yeah don't understand the the, the nature of the Easter Bunny, but I think of the Easter Bunny as a game designer, right? Like that's literally a game, yeah. and it's a game that is familiar worldwide. Uh, and you can do that with a Cambria headset, right? Mm -hmm. You can yeah. hide things around your house and build a game in that very physical way of just using your your surroundings in ways you never thought to use them. And mm -hmm. that's that's the type of space that game designers can explore in the coming year. Do, do you see that becoming a very big draw very, very quickly for consumers? Because I, when I look at Cambria, th the reasons as a gamer that I might end up buying one are the, is the idea that it's going to be hopefully an easier VR headset to put on my face. And, you know, as, a, as both a VR enthusiast and someone that does it for their job, that's the thing that's most important to me in the whole world is just getting something on my face with as much ease as possible and it being comfortable and it working. Right now I have a you know Quest 2, which is super bulky. The tracking is still, it's been giving me some real issues lately. Um, and I think to myself, if Cambria is able to just, even from an ergonomic perspective, make significant leaps over Quest 2, that would be a huge thing for me to view it as kind of like a pro gaming device. Mm. I I think you're you're going to the exact thing that they're going to judge the the success of this product on, right? If you have a Quest and a Cambria both sitting in front of you, which one do you go for? And mm. when you go for it, do you spend more time on average in headset than you did if you grabbed the other one? Yeah. And if either of those, you know, if that number of minutes that you spent is on average higher in the Cambria, then they've won. Then, then that meta has succeeded in uh, proving out this different design and, and all these features as being compelling enough to keep you in headset for longer. And then they have to figure out which of those features actually needs to come down to the Quest 3 or the next Quest uh, in their mainstream line that will keep those people in headset longer. Yeah. But that's, I think you're literally, uh, that, that's, that's how they're going to judge the success of this product is, did it, did it uh, lead to more minutes of usage on average per user? 
that's a that's a John Carmack connect stat <laughs> coming in the next that, what yeah. like two or retention. three years. Retention. He always talks about retention yeah, and how exactly Quest retained users more than Go, and uh, I think that's what he said. Uh, I know it was Go retained users more than Gear VR. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, they need to see if that the same is true going on down the line here. Yeah. Because the the other point of, to this is what is what you were leading with is the mixed reality experiences and are we going to start like it's interesting that this video that Zuckerberg has this is essentially kind of a game right it's a showcase and it's a proof of concept and everything like that but as they've always done with VR it's it's a game first and foremost and it's 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 an interesting thing where. Early on, we kind of had like this, oh, is it going to be VR or AR that paves the way forward? And this is the first time we're actually seeing this kind of very uh, solid convergence of the two into kind of something that's kind of AR, but also kind of its own technology in a way. It's 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 this weird third eye <laughs> in a way. Um, and I don't... I've never been big on early AR systems and even like HoloLens and Magic Leap from the sense of, you know, we we each have the angles that we enjoy covering here at Upload. I enjoy, you know, creative experiences, storytelling experiences. Um, so I focus mainly on the games and storytelling uh, and movies and everything like that. And that's been hard for me to really get on board with on an AR perspective because, you know, you're still in the real world uh the technology is still kind of limited so you can't do you can't realize the, the the expression of ar you really want to at this point in time but we are going to get closer to it with this headset mm -hmm. so i guess do you do you see there becoming a lot of new gaming mixed reality experiences on cambria like very, very quickly? Or do you think it's going to take a, a, lot of, a lot of time to get really compelling and prove out? Like, is it starting again like it's 2013 all over again? Oh, interesting question. You know, they, they call it Cambria, right? And I, we, 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 we've talked about the pre-Cambrian explosion or the, the Cambrian mm. explosion of life, I think, is uh, what that's a reference to, of just all mm. these different things that can spring out of this one idea. And it, it, it could. I'm... The price is going to be limiting from a certain perspective, but yeah, you know, like they've got App Lab, and so if if you you're a dev out there and you can build out a great version of your experience on Cambria and then have a black and white version of that running on App Lab on the Quest Two, you've actually got a significant audience that you can mm. get to with your experimental idea that looks at some of these ideas, but we have yet to see like whether that really will work that way. If, if it becomes really hard for devs to put their thing back onto Quest 2 from this, then it's it's not going to be as big overnight for, for games and, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I There was something I was thinking about with this that, that seemed significant, and I've lost my... You can try it on Quest 2. Yeah, I can't wait to try this experience. It's That's bummer that it did week, launch it? before we came... Yeah, it should be any yeah. minute... Uh, it'll probably be on the store by the time this publishes. Oh, uh, and we'll get an idea of what it's like when you actually have understanding about your house. But like that's what I was describing. Like these scenes that the new APIs that Meta is rolling out, it's basically just like the floors and walls are mm -hmm. are understand understood now. But what mm -hmm. happens when it, you layer on even more understanding and like, uh, an object that was there one minute is moved to another. Is there any way to incorporate even more stronger understanding of your environment into game design? Like, uh, I don't know. I I always think of Couch Nights. Did you ever play Couch Nights back in the day? Uh, Unreal demo. I, I never. Yeah. I never played it, but I've seen it. It was a cool idea to just like have two people sitting on the couch together with game pads both wearing VR headsets mapped to their real environment, and you have a little character that's running around the floor mm. around you. And you could have, theoretically, have two of them or, or multiples of them, and you each have this little character that can hide behind your actual couch. But it's kind of like almost limitless to think of the, the game you can have playing around in your physical environment around you 
even in single player or multiplayer like there's just so many cool ideas that that we could mm. have uh that i can't i can't even comprehend the different ideas like one of the you could knock out a wall and play mario on that wall right the whole wall yeah. and the rest of your walls can be regular walls so like you can choose which parts you want to be the physical world and which ones you want to be a game world mm. uh yeah it's gonna be do wild you, do you think um it's similar to the way quest 2 came into the market and we started fairly quickly seeing some quest 2 exclusive content do you think um a year from now or two years from now a year and a half whatever there's going to be like a significant difference between playing a game on quest 2 and playing a game on cambria or do you think that this time around meta will want to stray away from having those clear differences given the different focuses and you know quest 2 shooting for that consumer experience Hey, it's it's all going to be the around hand interactions i think uh we mm. have to see how meta ends up selling a device without controllers yeah. they have a lot of branding invested in the quest name as well as controller based games that run on that hardware so like they, they've done a lot of work to train people to say you can have an incredible gaming experience that's only possible in VR if you put these two controllers in your hand. Well, we know Cambria is, uh, from the leaks, going to have these self-track controllers. That mm -hmm. gives them a path to sell those higher-end controllers as like an upgrade or the better option, whereas they could have a lower-end option that is just controller-free hand tracking with the best possible hand tracking tech so you have a great hand tracking experience and you get to play the the subset of games that are either hand tracking only or work in either controller or hand tracking mode and they're building out that library right now of which games work that way uh what we what i haven't seen is uh, unplugged is the closest we have gotten to like a killer app for that yep. medium for for that mode of play and i I wonder if, you know, if you put a person into Unplugged blind, that's the first experience that they had in a VR headset. Is that going to be a good experience on a Quest 2 uh, with with all the hand tracking upgrades? Or is it still going to be them like, oh, this is this is weird? Yeah, like it's not a great onboarding experience, is it? It's, uh, you need past experience. And, and that, that goes back to what we were talking about with that Eolia game of, you know, maybe that's the kind of thing where that is a significantly upgraded experience on Cambria because hopefully they're able to provide much better fidelity in the hand tracking. Uh, it's also interesting to think about I, I, when I was doing my interview with Alchemy Labs um, a couple of weeks ago for an article that, that uh, <laughs> finally went up on the site recently. Um, they are very, very, very bullish about hand tracking and it to me it sounds like absolutely their next project is going to probably be if not exclusive then have a very heavy focus on hand tracking but the the way you know to your point the, the way alchemy approaches game design is to imagine it is everyone's first ever vr experience not you know like they built job jib chip simulator job simulator uh and then they went uh they went and said okay well now let's make a bigger deeper job simulator with like rpg mechanics or anything they said no okay now let's continue to refine the onboarding experience with vacation simulator and then cosmonius high i think that the interesting thing about hand tracking for me is i can't wait to jump into these kinds of experiences and start finding out what's possible but you are going to need a controller for a lot of the kind of content that, again, that you know I like in VR and want to cover in VR. So it's going to be an interest. It's going to be interesting to see how much more uh, Cambria can move the needle on, and if experiences like the one we're seeing in this video can prove to be really compelling tactile experiences for people that do like those deeper, uh, more traditional games, right? And that's, I guess, for me, that's. That's what we need to see with Cambria is, 
is that combination of mixed reality and hand tracking going to very quickly be able to start providing creative experiences that are just as compelling as the best VR experiences, which I think is a, yeah. a tall order. Tall order, and I'm, I think, I think they're going to make it. I think, I think we'll see it. I think you're asking a lot of these questions are asking, is it going to happen? And I think, I think they're there. I think the developers, Hand Physics Lab. I've been, I, I, you know, I went into Hand Physics Lab before and after their 2.0 hands update, and even the menu system here uh, that I was playing with. So they they have this menu system where you do this pinch maneuver on the right hand and you access the air menu to do things like start a video or recenter your screen uh, or like access the Oculus button, which brings up your menu. So you got to do this is your this is your home screen. Uh, there we go. Activate it. Finally. <laughs> you just put a controller by your head. <laughs> I said that while I said that while uh, having my controllers over here, and I think I bumped my <laughs> controllers while talking about hand tracking. Yeah, but you've got this menu on your hand. I couldn't. I honestly, I, I, the menu has been there for months, and I couldn't understand how to interact with that menu until mm -hmm. the hand track. Like it feels like after this update, oh, that's how that menu works. <laughs> I couldn't comprehend how that menu works. Like even that yeah. simple menu got better after all these updates. Like. There's a learning curve of learning how to interact with these menus. The hand tracking has to get better, but it is it has come around the corner. Like I, I now kind of I, I'm moving to this place where I'm starting to be annoyed by the controllers to a certain extent. Wow. Like why yeah. do I have to take the controllers with me? Yeah. Yeah, that's that is really really interesting. I mean, what I was going to ask next is, do you think you know we still haven't seen anything from the studios that? Um, meta owns since they bought them basically you know lone echo 2 was already in production when meta bought uh ready at dawn studios but do you think as a kind of signifier of just how serious they are about this we could see like a lone echo game that is using hand tracking first and foremost with a controller alternative Ooh. and that could be like a a big selling point for Cambria and, you know, potentially Quest Free. Or whatever, I have yet right? to see. That's that's a great point. Gripping, you know, there's so many games where gripping your surroundings uh, is the fundamental mechanic and pulling and, like, pulling from those surfaces mm -hmm. is how you get around. So the climb, uh, Echo VR, Lone Echo, those things. I have yet to see a game that interacts that way where I'm, I'm just pulling at the air to locomote mm -hmm. around the environment. And even as I'm doing that right now, I'm seeing my hand tracking get lost. I, yeah. I need to see that game demo. That specific game demo is the answer to your question, I think, James. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see uh, what Cambria is going to do uh, for VR gaming. I'm very, very interested to learn about it. It's going to be really interesting to cover it because, again, we haven't really seen many VR headsets that occupy this kind of middle ground between consumer and enterprise before. And to your point, I think that the best way to measure the success of it is going to be, yes, is there much better retention inside Camry just because it offers that higher fidelity, more convenient experience with these extra, you know, like this is, a, like you said, it's a dev kit. It's going to be a preview of the mixed reality that hopefully we'll be enjoying on, on Quest 3 and 4 in the future. So, yeah, that's later in the year, um, and we'll we'll get to it when we get to it. But there's a whole summer of stuff uh, before that, including the Upload VR Showcase, which hopefully this time, by this time next week, we'll get to talk about in a more official capacity. Uh, but that's shaping up nicely. Um, that about brings us to the end of this week's edition of the Upload VR Gamescast. Ian, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Let me enter your game space with my big brain thinking. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> It's far too intelligent for this podcast. Normally we're just <laughs> talking about how we don't understand American football, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, Ian will be back with Heaney next Tuesday for the VR download. I'll hopefully be back with, uh, well, whoever wants to join me uh, this time next week. I, I said that so wrong. I'll hopefully be back with Harry. What I meant was... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll go back. I'll go back no. to Meta Land. I'll, I'll escape. <laughs> Meta Land. Yeah, I don't it's know. called Horizons. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> and we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs>